Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel Ray and today I have finally a whip and chat for you all. First of all, let me say I'm really, really sorry for not uploading one sooner. I had intended to, but just it's been very busy since I got back from Germany. So yeah, it's just been kind of crazy. Okay, so um, today, I am working on Time to Witch by Aura Loa, and this is what I have going on at the moment. You can see that I've done most of the first third of the painting, and I'm going to be working on this section, and I may even be able to open up another section. We'll see how much time I have, but... Um, this is a square drill diamond painting. Uh, this is one of the older kits that they have uh, where there are a few drill issues, but uh, if you purchase from Oraloa now, they have assured me that the drills are uh, a, a better quality where they are going to fit together nicely. So please do not be afraid. Um, the last time that I checked on the website, this particular, um, this particular painting was not available, but that may change. I'm not sure. Um, today's pen, uh, I finally, I got this in the mail. You will see it on Wednesday when I do an unboxing video, but this was actually, and I did misspeak in the video, this I purchased from someone that, uh, is in the Facebook group Crafters Anonymous with Miss Coffee. And, uh, this was a pen that she was destashing, and when I saw it, I just had to have it. Look at this beautiful hybrid. This was turned by James Clevenger. He is the resident turner in the group. He also has his own Etsy shop. It is called Black Wolf Wood Works, all one word on Etsy. I'll make sure to link him down below. Uh, and the tips I got from Enablers Outpost, which was also in the box that you will see on Wednesday. I'm using Enablers Outpost Chit, which stands, which means putty in Romanian. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and load my pen. A lot of you had questions about this. When it comes to putty, I just I usually go and like push down and scrape it away like this and try to fill up the pen like so with quite a bit of pressure like that. And I don't know if you can see that. So there's a little bit overhanging on the side and it is kind of squidging out a little bit, kind of, um, kind of rounded. I want to get it as flat as I can because it is going to, due to physics, it's going to come out when I pick up my first set of drills. So I recommend with putty and with like other waxes that aren't pink wax that you test it out first before you go and uh, place the diamonds down because it could get a little residue on them. You could also use your fingernail and just go along the edge and kind of push inward. And then I'm going to take that excess wax and I'm just going to pop it down on the sheet there with the rest of it. So now it is full. It is flush ish. <laughs> And now I'm going to fill my single placer. How are you doing? If you don't know what a whip and chat is, ooh, that is going to need a little bit of washi tape. Bear with me. So if your tip is coming out of the pen like mine was, you can wrap some washi tape around it to increase the thickness of the tip. I like to just twirl the end like so because the the divot the hole is deep should be deep enough to get that tip in and then it's nice and snug and it's not going to move around like it was before okay let's try that again so just get the tip in this one is a curved single placer tip so it's quite interesting i'm gonna just keep pushing down and dragging it away just to make sure that it's nice and full in there. Tap the desk. 
and it's nice and full. Uh, the the one thing about these is that the there's pressure on the inside that will make the wax kind of pop out a little bit, and um, that's something about these metal single placer tips that's different from the original pen tip. And I saw this a while ago and I figure I might as well just address it here because why not? So in a regular diamond painting pen, you've got the brass tip. The brass tip actually has a hole on the inside. So you may notice that there's like a strand of wax going from the inside out. Um, and you might be like, oh, that's gross. It's actually just physics. Um, if there wasn't a hole here, in the tip, then this wax wouldn't stay in. That that kind of happens with these pens. So I'm just curious to try this out. This is my first time using a curved um, solid tip. I'm going to use the tray that was given to me in the, well, that was, that, that was part of the spring box from Enablers Outpost. I've, I've never used a leaf shaped one. We'll see how that goes. And we're gonna pick a color and we're just gonna go for it. So let me pick the color that has the most, the most is G and that is number 11. I'm working out of baggies on this kit um, because it is so small. I just didn't feel like kitting up in a, uh, like a storage system. It, it would just take too long and I'm not, not really feeling that for this project, maybe for a bigger project. The drills line up really well in this one. I'm going to give that a tappy tappy just to make sure that they're lined up at least a few rows. I could have put more drills in here, but it's okay. Uh, and let me situate. All right. So, hi. <laughs> Long time no see. Um, it's been a hot minute. By the way, I'm a very light presser, so... Um, if you're a hard presser, don't press hard for the first few times because this putty could end up on the drills, but it will make indentations in the putty. Okay. I'm sure that a lot of you who already kind of know this are probably like, why are you taking so long? There are so many new diamond painters out there and they are asking these questions. So I want to make sure that I answer them. At least do the best I can until I can make a video about it, which... Hopefully will be soon. Um, so I want to take you back in time today and talk about my trip to go visit my friend Heike in Germany. A lot of you who have been here for a long time, you know exactly who I'm talking about. Heike is Stone Cold Coffee Crafts here on YouTube. Um, and I have known her since the very beginning. Uh, we were kind of like this kind of, I don't know if you want to call it a group, but some of the first diamond painters that I met online on YouTube, like YouTube lives and in the comment section of my videos, um, Heike, Miss Coffee, um, Wolfpack, there were, there were a few of us. And anyhow, it's been a few years since I've met her online. It was 2018 when we met online. And I finally, finally, after a few years of trying, managed to go and visit. I went by myself. I did not take my husband. He stayed home with the dog and um, the chickens. <laughs> yes, I have chickens. <laughs> um, and I got to get go on my own and it was so much fun. I was there for the week before Easter and Easter day. Um, it was, it was so relaxing. It was exactly what I needed. I needed to rest and recharge and kind of get away from, from home really not, not, not for any bad reasons, but just because you know, a change of scenery is nice and I absolutely love to travel. And one thing about me is that I love the in, bet in between stage of travel. I love airports and train stations 
and bus stations. Like I, I really like to idle when I'm traveling and I had missed that. It has been such a long time since I was on public transport, since I had to figure out my own way. Um, it's just, it gives me so much joy to, to be in that situation. And I know a lot of people find it exceptionally stressful and I found parts of it to be stressful too, but all in all, I really enjoyed the, just the travel ish part, that, that part of it. And then arriving and like realizing, you know, meeting her. Oh, so I'm going to get into it. So I left and it was a beautiful sunny day here and my flight was from this little tiny rural airport, uh, Cary Airport in Ireland to go to Frankfurt um, Hahn, which is not the main international airport. It's like it's outside the city. It's like an hour outside the city. And by the time I landed... Let me get another color because otherwise I'm just going to be <laughs> talking. Where's the lowercase e? It's 19. Um, it was dark. Like the sun was setting. It was so beautiful. Um, got to see all these mountains and small towns and everything. It was gorgeous. Um, and it took forever for, it seemed like it took forever for me to get my baggage from uh, the turnstile like thing it just seemed like it was taking ages and ages and ages I was so excited and just said like hurry up and give me my stuff um and then I remember walking oops walking right through those gates and immediately just like it's you <laughs> uh big hugs and just like I can't believe I'm here I've made it um and it, it was just so wonderful. Um, she even brought me bread. <laughs> like, so they have these uh, pizza-esque, like, how do I put it? It's a, it's a type of flatbread with cheese and bacon. And it's just perfectly broiled you know so it's crispy cheese oh my goodness so that was my dinner <laughs> and we had to drive for about th was it three or three and a half hours back to her house from the airport and bless her like I told her that it was fine I could take a train and she was like no you're not allowed so they came and picked me up Thank goodness, because I can't even imagine, like, <laughs> I can't even imagine how tired I would have been, but um, I really didn't want them to go to all that trouble, but I'm glad they did. Um, as soon as we got back to their house, um, I, like, immediately said hello to her cats, Nellie and Lola. Um, that was the only time that Nellie really hung out with me. <laughs> <laughs> Nellie is very much like a an antisocial cat and Lola the one that you would see in her videos quite often um they're both rag dolls by the way Nellie is just very like to herself all the time okay that's all the lowercase t's sure is so uh yeah crashed crashed on the airbed I was so tired. But the next day and the days following, I was just so happy to be there. Um, the breakfast, like every day we were having these breakfasts, which I wouldn't typically eat this way. So it was really fun to have like, okay, let me get my color. Hold on. S is 22. I don't pay attention. I'm going to put down the wrong color, and I've already done that once on this painting, um, because I was talking, <laughs> of course. Um, so yes, bread, bread and spread and meat, sometimes chocolate. 
Uh, sometimes, you know, it would be a sweet thing or a savory thing, but it was always just so fun because it's kind of like assembling your breakfast every day and it could be different depending on your mood, you know, and I just found it really fascinating and so fun compared to my breakfast, which is usually just a bowl of cereal because you know, I'm not going to go to that length. So a little bit of the, the putty was coming out. So I just pop that off. We'll see how long I can get out of this. Um, we did a few things. I mean, we went shopping, we went and see, saw grocery stores, which was so fun. I find it interesting to see, you know, what people eat in different countries. And this is my first time ever in Germany, so um, everything was brand new. And I love it. I love it. Um, just the amount. There was so much, what I would call lunch meat, but it was just, um, you know, sliced meats and things. Um, pickles everywhere. Lots of bread. All different kinds of bread. More bread than I've ever seen in my life. It was incredible. Pretzels of all shapes and sizes. It was just, I don't even know how to explain it without, cause you know me, if you know me, if you've been in live streams with me, or if, uh, if I've been in one of your live streams, my creator friends, uh, you know that I'm kind of obsessed with food. I have a probably, it's probably not the most healthy relationship with food. I love food. I love talking about food. That's just a thing. <laughs> That's just my thing. Um, but it's kind of how I experience places and things. Is that, that's a little bit of this. Hold oh, please. A little bit of the metal from the tip of the pen has just come off. Like, I don't know if you can see that. Anyway, okay, that's fine, that's fine. I'm sure it's just, um, the, there's like a coating on there to make it look gold. Okay, so where was I going? Yes, so there's a lot of food. Uh, we also stopped at the pharmacy, um, chemists, whatever you want to call it, and I was going to pick up like a few things, and I got distracted by a couple of things, like new eyeshadow that was in a Bambi case. Oh my goodness. Uh, so pretty, so I got that for myself as a little treat. And when I went to pay, I could not find my debit card. Yeah. So it turns out that I left my debit card on the plane. And so I immediately canceled my card. Like we went back to the house and I, I looked everywhere. Like I turned my luggage upside down. I was like, what the heck? Um, and yeah, so <laughs> I was like, I don't know what to do. I don't have any money. What am I going to do? Well, it turns out that we weren't really going to go and do anything anyway. We were just going to, you know, sit around and craft together. It was not, it was not a case of we're going to go out and I'm going to go tourist shopping and all this stuff. Cause that's not really, not really where I was there. You know what I mean? Like I could always go back to Germany for the tourism but I was really there just because I really wanted to see my friend. So uh, I was upset for about two seconds and then I was like, you know what, it's fine, it's fine. If if I need to buy something, um, I, I will PayPal you the money or something, you know what I mean? It's not the big a deal. So um, I did have a credit card with me. So the few times that I was gonna buy something, like I bought dinner one night, um, it was no big deal. But another thing about me, maybe that you don't know is, um, some people joke about this, but I'm really laid back when it comes to issues like that. When it comes to if, if, because the, the, the probability is there, right? It's kind of like the way that you handle the situation, I think is... 
how do I don't know how to put that, but it's, it's more important to not, to me, to not freak out because I know that freaking out is not going to help me. So, you know, I did have the backup and everything. Maybe if I was alone, I would be much more, you know, worried and everything, but I wasn't and it was okay. So, um, we, we ordered Chinese. Um, it was incredible. It tasted way better, um, than stuff that I've had here. I'll be honest. Let's get number two, which is actually number two on this canvas. Love that. Um, and it was, it was gorgeous. We like, we were watching movies. We were on Twitch. Um, we, one time, one night we had an entire Lord of the Rings extended movie edition, um, like marathon. <laughs> we, we could only watch two movies in one day and then we had to watch the other one the next day because there was just, we would have had to wake up at like nine in the morning for that to happen properly, <laughs> but it was so much fun. I need, I need a sip of coffee. Hold on. It was so much fun. Um, it, I, we started, oops, sorry. We started working on our friendship samplers, which is this cross stitch project. I've shown it in my floss tube and I'm really close to being finished. So I think the next time I update you, you will see a finish on that project. Um, it's really special to me. I've been waiting. We both have been waiting a really long time to start that. Um, but it was clear that when we made the plans to see each other in person, that we would start it then. And we were supposed to meet each other in person last year. So, you know, I've been just like eagerly awaiting to start this project and um, to start it with her. And because we are going to be working on it for each other as well, it just made it ultra special, you know? So the idea is that it's a two-parter, like it's got, um, it's got the top section, which we are doing together, or we're doing it on our own fabric with our own floss colors and, um, you know, in our style. And once we're finished with that section, we're going to mail the projects, our projects to each other. We're going to swap. And then I'm going to stitch on hers. She's going to stitch on mine. And then when we send it back, it'll be ready to frame. And it's just, I highly recommend doing that with a friend if you are a stitcher. Or even if you're a diamond painter, you could probably do that with a friend too. And I think that would be really kind of special to know that, you know, you've worked on something together. I think crafting together is, is just, it's just really special. It makes it, it makes it fun. And, you know, whenever I look at a project that I work together with someone else on, I just remember all of those really wonderful memories that I had, you know, um, other things that we did now, this is going to be out of order because it's been, it's been three weeks, I think, since I was there, but it's like, we went to the mall one day and they showed me this place. We went and had ice cream together and they brought me to this place that had spaghetti ice cream. Y'all, it was so funny. <laughs> like, the menu was so cute and I like, I looked at it and you know, they had these mounds of like noodle shaped ice cream. Like you could get like the, the strawberry one or a chocolate one. It was like really cool. Um, and even though like that, that was really fun to look at. I did have to order my two favorite, all-time favorite ice cream flavors. And if you're watching this this far, I would like to hear what your favorite ice cream flavor is in the comment section, please. Uh, my 
two ultimate favorites are cherry and mint chocolate chip or mint. You know, if you can't get mint chocolate, then just plain old mint is fine too. Those are my absolute two favorite ice cream flavors and they had them and they were stunning. Absolutely amazing. I had a really good time that day too. Um, we, after we went to the mall, we went back home, home, their home, and got ready for dinner, which I had picked out before leaving because it was really highly rated and like they have, they have a style of cuisine that is regional. So it's, 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 it's Swabian which is like Southern German, I think, the way I understood it. And we ordered, I, I decided to order kind of like the, you look at the menu and you go, okay, well, what, what is this place like famous for? And they had this dish. I thought that it was all going to come out on one plate, you know, like, a big plate and then it have like all these little side dishes on it. That's what I was expecting. And it was actually a tower of food. <laughs> I'll, if I can, I'll insert some pictures here. Um, so that you can see the menu and then the actual picture of the food. So it was like, so over the top and I was really really happy to try all these different dishes all in one you know I thought one plate but no no it was a tower of three plates I was so full after this dinner that like I couldn't move <laughs> it was so good um let's get x x is 26 26 I only have one diamond in this color, so boop. Just get a few. I think it's just one. So I'm just gonna do that one real quick. Um but yeah, I got that's when I posted the picture of me and the deer. The the or no, it was a goat. Me and the goat head. <laughs> I was at the restaurant at that time. Or or actually that wasn't there. I, I uploaded it after because I didn't have any, I didn't bother getting mobile data. I just use Wi-Fi when I travel. Um, star is 28. So yeah, it was really cool. Uh, it tasted delicious. Um, unfortunately the gift shop wasn't open or we didn't check to see it. Um, I would have loved to have gotten maybe some sausages or something like that, but that's okay. It was amazing. It was delicious. Highly recommend 10 out of 10. Um, we also decided to go to a Greek restaurant. Incredible. Love Greek food. Um, I ordered like a, a meat platter and y'all like Literally, I couldn't, I felt like I couldn't move after the Swabian meal, the Greek meal. It was just meat. <laughs> um, and I, I'm sure I've told y'all, but I'm actually allergic to red meat. Um, but is pork red meat? I don't know. Um, but I honestly, I felt like I was going to explode with how much food I ate. <laughs> it was just so delicious. I couldn't stop. Um, and I have a relationship with olives and tatsuki. I just, yeah. So anyway, okay. I'm, I'm really like harp, harping on about the food, but really like the most special times were the times when we were hanging out and we were like, Heiko was starting a new project, a yarn knitting project. And I had just finished that same project. So she decided to start Slip Stravaganza. Let me look for a little H, lowercase h, 15. She decided to start that project. Mm, no, that's 14. I need 15. Thank you. Right? 15H, yes. 
um, she decided to start that project and while I was there and we were like hanging out and she was, we, we actually worked together to like put the yarn into cakes and you know, just, just like the stuff that I would normally do at home, but with a friend and it was just, yeah, it was really special. Um, so, and you know, it's been so many years and it's been really hard. I'll be honest, like not being able to socialize as much and, um, having an online friendship for a really long time, it just feeling like, you know, somebody that well, and then finally being able to spend time with them. It was, it was really, really nice. We, we did a lot of, um, like crafting together and just, you know, enjoying our company and I don't know how much more <laughs> I should share. Um, but honestly, like, I can't wait to do it again. I cannot wait for her to come and visit me in Ireland. I know she's going to have an incredible time. Um, I am not putting in pictures of us together because, um, for her own privacy. Uh, and if she ever wants to share, um, she's more than welcome to, but you know, like just, I don't take a lot of photos in my own life anyway <laughs> of myself, but, um, I, I don't take photos and post them unless I have permission either. So you just have to, just have to wonder what she looks like <laughs> until you meet her in person, I suppose. But anyway, that was, that was highly special to me and I cannot wait, cannot wait to see her again. One thing that I have learned though, do not travel the day after a holiday. What was I thinking? What was I thinking? I decided to come back home on Easter Monday. Bad idea. Um, every child that ever could be was on that plane with me. And I had a toddler who was kicking the back of my seat and their mother was not doing anything except letting the child continue doing this. And I was going to say something, but, um, I just decided to just not, not make a big deal out of it because who knows what that mom was going through. It's none of my business. Um, I was a little bit salty because I paid for an upgrade to have more leg room, but obviously I didn't pay to not have children kicking the back of my seat. So I'd rather have leg room and children kicking my seat than not having leg room because I am a tall person. So I needed, I needed more coffee. Um, seven, seven and seven. Wonderful. Ooh, I need to sneeze. Hang on. Okay. Dokie. So sorry. Whew. Um, it's raining really bad. So I don't know why my allergies are kicking up. So let's Fast forward a little bit. I'm going to just give you a little update on what's been going on in, in my house, in my life, um, lately, why I haven't been here <laughs> and, uh, you know, what's going on. So I have, it's no surprise to anyone who's been here for a little bit that I have needed to seek some medical attention. Uh, I've, I've been going to therapy for a few months now. Um, I decided to take a little step back from the channel because the pressure was really getting to me. Now this is like, a lot of it is internalized pressure. Um, some of it was external. Some of it was people wanting me to do things for them that would also benefit me. Like, for example, doing unboxings and um, having deadlines on certain projects and etc. cetera. And uh, since... What? Okay. So 
y'all remember Gigi. Gigi was a cat that I brought in from the outdoors who I took to the vet to make sure that she was fixed and um, she stayed with us for a few months. I think it was four months, five months, maybe, no, four, four months from November to February. And then she got outside and she eventually, she got outside a few times, but eventually she decided to stay outside and she has not come back since. I've seen her once in a while walking around outside, but she's not, you know, she's always welcome to come back in. I still have the litter tray and a whole bag of litter and food and everything, which of course I'm going to probably change out. Um... If she does decide to come back inside but she seems to be living just fine out there when Gigi came into my life I needed her really really bad and I've talked about this to a few people and um, there's a few people that keep encouraging me that you know she she it's okay that she's outside I didn't fail you know cuz I did I felt like I failed um, being a good cat mom, but Gigi was already an outdoor cat. She, she knew how to, how to take care of herself in the wild. So, um, being inside was probably like being in a little bit of a prison, especially with my dog. Uh, Luna is very protective, very jealous. So it wasn't a good condition for her and but, but in that time, she healed a part of me that I didn't know needed healing. And I know that that's probably, to some of you, that might sound a bit kooky. But um, she helped me realize how much I needed to open up to someone and that it was going to be okay if I decided to start counseling and talk therapy. And so I contacted a doctor, like a therapist, um, a licensed therapist, who I was recommended to by my GP in December. I contacted them in March. Um, it took me a long time to feel comfortable enough to to even make the phone call because I suffer from an acute anxiety disorder uh, that makes it really difficult for me to initiate uh, difficult conversations um, regarding me and, and my anything. Okay. Like I would rather do it online. Do you know what I mean? Like I'd rather fill in the form online and stuff like that. Um, and of course, um, I'm sure that a lot of you have already seen it, but, um, back in 2019, I made a video about how I finally sought help medical attention for my depression because in 2019, I finally had realized that I probably was depressed. Um, I was masking it really, really well. And, um, eventually I wasn't anymore. Um, my husband's father passed away in the day after Christmas of 2018. And I finally sought help in, I believe it was April or May of 2019 when I realized that um, not only was it, uh, due to the passing of my father-in-law, but, you know, with how my husband felt as well and those feeling like all of those feelings combined with a lot of things that I was dealing with from, per, you know, early years and everything just kind of got to a boiling point and they diagnosed me with clinical depression and put me on medication and it did, it helped. Medication helped, um, but it wasn't enough. And I knew that from the beginning, I told the doctor, you know, I really want to seek counseling 
and the advice that I received was to wait for a while to see if the medication would allow me to overcome whatever I was going through because you know you a person may be able to tick the boxes so to speak uh, for certain uh, disorders or whatever it might be but of course um, seeing as this was my first time ever ever showing these symptoms they thought maybe it's just you know maybe it's just mild maybe it's not a big deal um, but even after, and I'm trying to be as open and honest about this with you all because I want to help people who are like me and afraid to get help. I always said, don't be afraid to get help. I was afraid to get help because of my anxiety. My anxiety would make me feel like, oh, well, you're, you, what you're going through isn't enough. Like it's not worthy of attention, of medical att attention, which is far from the truth. If you feel off in a way, trust your gut, right? It's just like, it's your mental health is just like your physical health. If you if you don't feel right, assess yourself, you know, and, and say, okay, well, I've been, I've been feeling kind of weird lately and I think I need to talk to somebody about this. If you have the resources do it. Uh, I know that there are free resources out there in lots of countries as well. That's really important to look into if you do not have the budget for private health care, depending on the country that you live in. Um, my takeaway from this, though, that I really want to share with you is that I don't I don't talk about what I go through in my therapy sessions because that's personal, but I do want to let you know that the, I am suffering from PTSD and that is why in certain circumstances, my anxiety gets to a point, a stage where I shut down and I can't do things and it's really difficult to explain that to people. And now that I'm looking back, you know, because I am, I am still going through these things, but looking back, if things get to a point where I feel totally overwhelmed, I tend to run away. Um, I don't want to talk to people because I don't want to bother them. And I know that that's not the way to do it, but... Anxiety is weird, okay? Um, and I am working on it. So now that we've identified triggers and um, I'm, I've, I've been working with certain therapies, like, mo mo how would you explain it? Different ways of processing these feelings, these memories, and really connecting with my inner child, my, uh, the, the harshest critic in me, um, and all of these different aspects of, of just being a person. Um, I'm working on myself and that is a big step because to, to, work on yourself in like this kind of a way. It's not like, it's not a simple fix, right? It's, it's something that you have to really spend a lot of time with. And so what I'm trying to say is I'm doing the best I can <laughs> and I'm going to continue to do everything that I possibly can to keep bringing you fun and bubbly Rachel um, because she's there. She's, you know, I'm here. I keep saying she sometimes, sometimes I just dis disconnect with myself. I want to bring you the fun art stuff and I want to, um, 
continue to be here on YouTube and to make everybody feel welcome and to uh, have a lot of fun. So I'm not going to stop. Um, whether, whether people decide to follow that is up to the individual. Um, and I understand if, you know, um, maybe you're taking a break and that's, that's okay. But I do invite you to, to join me because I think that normalizing this is so important. Um, I know that I'm putting myself out there and, and sometimes I get a little bit nervous because I know that it's not normal for everybody to talk about all the stuff that they're going through. And I won't be sharing like intimate details. You're not, this is not a therapy session. Um, but you know, I'm going to try to fight that stigma that, um, that, that, that this is something that only happens to people who are like unhinged. That's not true. I'm just a normal person. Uh, like I say, I'm, I'm just a chick in a craft room. I am, I am a normal human being just like you, uh, with my own struggles. Um, I just, I, I want to, I want to connect with you and make you feel like you're not alone if you're going through the same things that I'm going through, or maybe it's just something similar. Um, so yeah, that, that is not going to change. Um, I'm not changing that direction at all. Um, I do invite you though, if you would like to see more, you know, there's a lot more to me than what I can give you one hour a week. And so if you are interested, I do have a, a weekly vlog that I post on my Patreon and I do get a bit more in depth there. You can see what, you know, what's going on and see more my dog and everything. But, um, but I just want to invite you if you, if you didn't know about it because not everybody does. Um, but yeah, I, I find that like if, if I were given the, the opportunity, I would probably be here a lot longer. Um, I just don't know who's listening. And so sometimes it's easier for me to do that, um, on, on my Patreon where I know, I know you. <laughs> oh, I almost didn't put those away. That's number four. So we only have one drill left. And I think that I've said everything that I want to say. One other thing is, um, I guess I haven't said everything that I want to say, actually, because I have updates on Luna. Uh, Luna, she's doing well, but uh, just recently, she, uh, you might have seen my video about her having needing surgery. Um, they found fistulas in her leg, which are just bundles of nerves, basically, and she got those removed, but unfortunately her leg has just opened up again. So she's going to have to probably see the vet again, which is a bummer. Uh, nobody really wants that. Um, and then James is so busy right now. Bless him. Um, he has been working double time, uh, compared to what he was originally after the war in the Ukraine started in February. Um, we received, we, we, in our town, we increased population by like 50%. Uh, and there was an, a real need for English courses being taught. So he is actually teaching English to refugees right now. And so the, that's one of the main reasons that Theory Tuesday has been hot and cold lately is that by the time that he gets home, he's often either preparing for classes, working on side projects for other things that he does uh, that's not work, that's volunteer related. Um, and because he's getting pulled in a lot of directions, there's a lot of stress on him. 
And the last thing that I want to do is add to that stress by making him film the video with me. So if and when they happen, they will happen. But I just want to let you know, because I never made like a, an announcement about that. So that's why he hasn't, why I haven't uploaded Theory Tuesday videos regularly. Um, but they certainly are a treat when they do happen. Uh, and I know that you all really love them as much as I do. And thank you so much for watching them. Uh, this week I will be on Twitch. You can find me. I'm not going to open a new section. I will do that tomorrow on Twitch. Um, if you go to twitch.tv slash Rachel Raycraft, I'm Rachel Raycraft everywhere on the internet except for YouTube. Um, I don't want to change my name on YouTube. I like that it's just my name for my channel, but Rachel Raycraft, no S. Um, I will be streaming at 11 a.m. Uh, Irish time, which is 6 a.m. Eastern time. I will be there tomorrow, which is Tuesday the 9th, no, Tuesday the 10th of May uh, for diamond painting. And then I will be on Thursday the 11th for cross stitching and I will be doing another whip sprint like I did last week. It was so much fun. It, I'm going to be spending 25 minutes on every single whip that I own for cross stitch. So definitely come and join us and have some fun, have some chats. If you need a pep talk before, you know, going to work in the morning, if it's morning time for you, or if you're just about to get to bed and you want to say hello, please stop on in. It is free. Uh, it's just a really good platform and I'm really enjoying it over there. So please, um, if you would like to visit, I have a link down in the description box below. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. It's been really, really great catching up with you and I will plan to do it more often. Uh, I do apologize for how long it's been. But tomorrow I'm going to be starting this section right here uh, on Twitch. And I hope to see you there. Maybe we'll even get two sections done tomorrow. I don't know. This cat face is, well, the cat body actually is mostly color blocking. So I think we're going to get really, really far in there. But um, this has been really fun to work on. I do enjoy it and I can't wait to show you the finish when I do eventually finish it. <laughs> uh, thanks again for watching y'all. I hope you have a wonderful day, a wonderful week ahead, and I will see you all very soon in my next video. Take care. Bye!